directly. And the whole time that this was going on, Francis Gaki, who was on the deck of this, this British ship, would run downstairs and the men said, sir, is our flag still there? Is our flag still there? And he would say, I can't see it, but I think so. There's so much smoke, I can't see it. And then he would come back up, and then he would stay for a while, and then he could hear the men downstairs, sir, is our flag still there? Is our flag still there? And he would come down and say, yes, the flag is still there. It's crooked, it's been hit, but it's still up. And then after a while, the men just prayed. He could hear them praying, the hull of the ship. In the morning, when the dust cleared, that flag was still up. When the men were released, as was the agreement, and they hit the shore, they all went to Fort McHenry. It was obviously a disaster. But what they found was that that flagpole had not only been hit several times directly, but the reason it was still standing and still high in the sky is because men used their bodies to hold that flag up. And at the bottom of that pile were dead bodies, and on the top were men who were either dead, dying, or very badly wounded. But they were holding that flag up. That's an idea. That's an example of defending freedom and defending humanity. Because the British were tyrants. No offense to those of you on the call. King George was an asshole. Their policies were ridiculous. The taxation was absurd. And... They thought little of other people's lives. So that is just one example that I can give you. And of course, Francis Gaki, experiencing that night, wrote the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem because of what he witnessed. They're not just words on the paper. They're true life events of something that did in fact occur. Taking account of our strengths and weaknesses and intentionally projecting and creating our future. I'm gonna share something with you that I was just the last time I saw Morinay, he shared with me. Um, and this part is about taking account of our strengths. Um, I have to tell you that I was absolutely blown away by what I'm about to share with you. As you know, I like jazz, smooth jazz. I have shared that with you in the past, and I have shared that with um, VAs. Uh, they know I play it in the car radio and I listen to it at the house. I listen to all kinds of music, but I have a real deep affinity for smooth jazz, contemporary jazz, I think they call it today here. Well, years ago, I gave them CDs. Some of them I made, some were original. Um, I gave those to Mornay. I've given him a watch, um, I've given him other things. Um, that there were personal items from Earth, well, obviously from Earth, that uh, were things that were special to me that I wanted to give him as a gift. Uh, he, however, was not allowed to keep those things. Everything would go into an archive because they're from the future, and anything that I give him is an artifact, you see, even the time we're living in right now is an artifact to them. So when I saw him a, a couple weeks ago, he was telling me that they had um, 
that they had some refugees on board their mothership and or ark. <laughs> and these um, refugees, there were several hundred of them apparently. Uh, I don't know any more about their story other than that they were delivered to their ship um, and they were refugees from a world that they needed to be rescued from. I do not know the circumstances other than that. Well, as they were exploring the ship, the areas they were allowed to, to go to, they were taken to the archives, apparently, where they were being shown other items from many different other worlds and artifacts from other worlds that the A's have explored for gifts that they've been given. And somewhere in that moment or moments, uh, music was presented to them. And apparently they started with um, fifth density civilizations and then some fourth density civilizations. And then they got to third density civilizations. And of course, my, and my contribution to that archive, whatever's there, has been jazz. Well, um, one of the CDs that I had given them years ago uh, was a CD by Brian Culperson. And apparently, I don't know if this was random. It, obviously, I wasn't there to know what happened other than what, what, what Anna told me is that somehow this one of his particular songs called um, The Journey was played. And apparently there is a part where the music builds at somewhere between the two, uh, two minute, 45 second to three minute and 11 seconds. There is a part there where the piano uh, builds into a crescendo. Well, as they were listening to this piece of music, these refugees there, when that crescendo apparently happened, it triggered a massive emotional response in them. And he, and Moriné said their entire ship felt it. The entire ship, everybody in the ship felt this, this explosion of emotion from this piece of music. And I said, well, was it grief? Was it sorrow? Was it pain? He, he goes, no, it was gratitude. It was gratitude. And he goes, everyone on the ship is now listening to this piece of music. Now, I have shared with you um, before in previous webinars and over the years about our ability to create music down here in third density. And it is something we are so used to, but you know, even though we may be in awe, many of us take it for granted because we're surrounded with music, with sound all the time. But here's a guy who wrote a song back in, I think it's 2012 or maybe earlier Brian Culperson, uh, who has no idea the impact he has had with his piece of this particular piece of music, and there are other pieces of music that the A's specifically, because that's what I can attest to have been moved by and enjoyed. The 
this is a strength for us. Now, to the A's, when they listen to a piece of music, it is obviously very heightened because sound carries differently in fifth density than it does in third. You know, we are constantly trying to create better and better stereo systems. But my understanding is we'll never match that which is in fifth density. Because there, the music is a wave. There, music is a, is a complete mesh of frequencies that totally move through one's body. In other words, when they pay, play a piece of music, it is something that is felt and experienced with all their physical form, not just their ears. And apparently this particular piece of music really moved these refugees. <laughs> now, now they want to listen to all the Earth archives, okay? And apparently that's going on. The A's, on the other hand, never really knew that piece of music was there, but now they're listening to this particular piece of music called The Journey. And I think it's interesting that that's the title of the song. Here we are. you know, floating through space. Trying to scratch and claw living. Trying to help and assure one another. Trying to assist as much as we can. Our own, ourselves, our families, our loved ones, our friends. And in the back of our mind, we're all concerned about what's going on in the world. Who's running it? What's the future look like? And I have to tell you, the future is actually really, really bright. Now, I know it may not appear that way because of, of the media. Uh, and the psychological warfare that is every single day coming after us, affecting us, pushing us down, holding us down, holding us back, wanting to control, to try to force us up, to be disheartened, to surrender. We can never, ever, ever allow that to happen. We simply cannot, because that's not our future, okay? That future belongs to a very small group of very, very dark beings, some that are human, some that are not, whose, whose only way to feel powerful, whose only way to feel anything is to hurt and bring pain to others. Now, what's interesting is that what would be perceived as a weakness, our empathy, our compassion towards each other, our willingness in most cases, to forgive. Those are all perceived as being weaknesses. But in reality, they're not. They're not weaknesses at all. They're actually our biggest and greatest strengths. 